part of Michigan, Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. have a chance to win a third straight series. They're ready for the Minnesota Twins here in the series wrap-up here at Comerica Park and here on Valley Sports as always presented by Figer Law. Minnesota won game one. Tigers bounced back with a nice win last night and now the rubber match. He's Gibby. I'm Shep. We'll hear from Natalie Kerwin a little bit later on. Detroit will turn to Michael Lorenzen to get the job done. Two and five on the year with a four ERA, but Gibby, he's pitched better than those numbers would indicate, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, he, he really has. In seven of his 12 starts, he's given up one earned run or less. He's thrown the ball very good. He's a guy that you can work with as well. He hits his spots, uh, and uh, he does a real good job with the Tigers, because that's something that they do very good. It's all about strike throwing. He has to command the zone and would like to get ahead of hitters. That's going to be really important for Detroit. But what's made him so effective is the defense behind him. He's kind of helped that defense, and the defense has helped him in turn. And what he does is he throws more fly balls. He turns more fly balls into outs than anybody in the major leagues. That's, that's incredible. And the Tigers, they don't do it with speed. They do it with positioning. And we've got some examples here of what they do. So you're going to look here. You're going to look and see Jake Marsnick over there. This is a left, a right-handed hitter. You usually pull at straight. Look at there straight away. Look at Marisnik, how he's over to the right. And uh, he's going to, they're, they're basically defending right center right here. And this ball right here is normally not caught. It's a rocket by Michael Garcia. And we're right there and we, we gobble up. Now here's another one. Usually you, you try to stay three even, okay? And this is a case where they do this, and you got Zach McKinstry over to the right field line, throwing the ball away, and he's on it quick. And you're not normally, those, these balls are not normally caught unless you position. And uh, SIS Sports, they rate the Tigers as the top team in turning those fly balls into outs because of the positioning in George Lombard oversees that for the Tigers. He's done a heck of a job, and it shows in many of the games. Lorenzen is number one in that category. His counterpart, Bailey Ober, is number two in that category. This is a big game for both these teams because Minnesota's got to go to Atlanta, and the Tigers got to go to Texas, two of the best teams in all of baseball. So both teams desperately want this one. They want the series, and they want bragging rights. And we'll see who gets it when we come back on Valley Sport. You buy Comerica Bank. Raise your expectations of what a bank can be. Come to Comerica. Buy wall side windows. Buy more, save more. Half off every window plus up to 15% off. Buy Figer Law. All we do is win. And by GMC. Visit your closest GMC dealer for exceptional offers all month long. Tigers have won four of the first six games against Minnesota this season. Michael Lorenzen's job is to win today and win the series for the Tigers. Will he be feeling it? We'll soon find out. His first pitch is next. Three degrees Sunday afternoon in Detroit. We bumped the start time up an hour early because of Mother Nature. Here's the Twins batting orders presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Carlos Correa, 17 game on base streak at Comerica Park that included a two for four of the homer performance last night. Royce Lewis is hitting 400 on the road. He bats fourth and batting sixth. The former Tiger Willie Castro hits in six of his last eight games for the Twins. And they're facing Michael Lorenzen making his 13th start, Gibby. Yeah, he's been really, really good. Record does not reflect that. Fastball change to the lefty, fastball slider. Gets the best defense from his outfielders in the game because he hits the spots. And you can cheat guys over when you know that your starter can get to a certain spot and you can be more predictable where that ball is going to come down and turn it into an out. 
faces Edward Julian to start in a first pitch swing and a base hit to right. As the Tigers defense behind Lorenzen, it's brought to you by Mary Grove Onyx. Matt Vierling making his second start of the season in left field. Jake Marisnik and Zach McKinstry sprinkled throughout the outfield. Maytown and Baez on the left side of Banez and Torkelson on the right with Rogers doing the catching. Vierling understanding that it's going to be a little bit deeper in right field than it would be in left. A.J. Hinch says, look, McKinstry been so consistent in right field. Jake Marisnik is going to play in center. But Matt Vierling has gotten a ton of reps in practice and in shagging fly balls and in Lakeland. Confidence that he can play left field without an issue. But it is a different look. Ball comes off the bat differently, and you have to play the position differently. Yeah, it, it comes down differently, too. And Sparky Anderson was always great. He just moved guys much the way that A.J. Hinch does. He's got confidence that they can do the job, Veerling in this case, and it's it's not even an issue. And you know, it's it's a good to be challenged on a regular basis. And a little different type of challenge today, and he'll be good. This is Donovan Solano. He's the first baseman for Minnesota today. See if they don't think hit and run here. Well, it's two strikes. We wouldn't do that, but uh, get him on the move. These are action pitches, usually with 2 2 count. You're predicting there's going to be a contact. 3 2 will be going probably for sure. Punch to right center field. McKinstry surrounds it. And there's out number one. You just take a look. We were talking a little bit about how they turn outfield outs. It flies into outs, but look at it looks when the ball's first hit. You can see where they're aligned. Looks like it's going to go up the gap, and look how quickly it gets closed up. Those outfielders are at a certain distance, so they know that they can cover that gap. You got to give something up. Maybe you're cheating off the line. You give the line up, but you give, but you do put the gap in play to snag it out of the sky. Lorenzen a very good strike thrower Gibby I would guess that adds to the defensive capabilities as well they know the ball's going to be put in play the ability to read the swings and read the spin off the bat all those are playing a factor for him right well there you can see how they're aligned right now at that little gap right there here's the right fielder right here. One one to Correa ground ball. Mayton cut off by and turn two. That's well done. Five four three double play from the twins. Here's the Tigers batting order presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Kerry Carpenter bats third in the designated hitter in his 15 games since his shoulder injury. He's hitting 354. Nick Mayton batting fifth. He went two for four yesterday. And Jake Marisnik at the bottom of the order has a three game on base streak. And they face six foot nine, 260 pound Bailey Ober. Boy, he lets go a bit close to home plate. Actually, Michael Lorenzen holds is way shorter than that. But uh, fastball slider, fastball change. He throws that change to right. He's too right on right change. You don't see that very often. Lots of fly balls turned into outs as well. Third in the league behind Michael Lorenzen, who's first. He's quickly behind Zach McKinstry, 2 0. The change up, he's talking his big key pitch. He's throwing 250 of them this year. No home runs. Willie Castro retires McKinstry to start. There's the rest of the Minnesota defense. Michael A. Taylor in center. Joey Gallo in right. Correa and Farmer up the middle. And Christian Vasquez is doing the catching. At third base is Royce Lewis. Really talented young player. While in the minors. Spent some off seasons at UC Irvine. Fielding with Nolan Arenado. Kind of picked his brain on playing third base. Arenado told him playing third is like an X. And playing shortstop is like an umbrella. Which I found interesting. X is the angles. You're jabbing one way or another. Umbrella is going wide at shortstop. Gives you more range. So he's taking that to heart. Yeah, 
one and one to Torkelson. Torkelson sends one to center. Taylor is there. Two fly ball outs to start the day. Tigers, they always have been grinding to the end. It took them a while to get to Kenton May the, the other night on Friday when we did the game. And like to try and see more productive swings early in the game. Try and grind these pitchers a little bit, make them get that pitch count up. And then you get a 2 0 count, you know he's not going to just throw a fastball down the middle. Got to hit a good pitch, especially when you're ahead in the count. A lot of strikeouts in the first two games of this series. Carpenter sends a liner to center, and that's a quick inning for Bailey over. Eight pitches, and he Eight retires pitch. the Tigers in order. The Tigers, as a staff, 10 consecutive games with 10 strikeouts or more, most in franchise history, and third most there recently in Major League Baseball. Last night, they punched out 13 combined, including Reese Olsen striking out nine. He got his first Major League win and will join us. So, what a play by Lorenzen. Second one this year, isn't it? How about it? that? A little magic trick to start the second and retire Royce Lewis. I mean, he actually, a lot of times you want your pitchers to let these go, but he's tried one of these or a couple in batting practice, it looks like, and he's right in the glove. Oh, look what I found. Hello. Olay. I don't know, man. That looks like it's on purpose, Gibby. Oh, no, definitely yeah. it was on purpose, but yeah. I'm just saying most guys wouldn't get that. That was an outstanding play. We, we talk about the fly ball mm -hmm. outs. I mean, there's an example of a ground ball out. He's got pretty good stuff. Pretty polished pitcher. Should win way more. Tigers got to get him some runs today. Yeah, he's been really good as a Tiger, I think. Remember, he started the year on the IL. But as Gabe pointed out earlier in the broadcast, has allowed one earned runner fewer in seven of his 12 starts. That's impressive. Facing Kyle Farmer here. Kyle Farmer's day was made earlier today. Wanted to sign baseball Stop. from Kirk Gibson and got one. Two and two. Man, Reddy's a little shaky today from eight run, eight games of bowling last night. So what'd you do? Terrible. Find that hard to believe. Little little reminder. Nobody's invincible. Pops it foul. Who's got it? <laughs> Nobody. A lot of bounce. <laughs> nice day, nice night yesterday. For 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 a ball game. Yeah. Late night golf. Really. Could be the same today. Really good crowd last night. For a national audience, so glad to see that they showed up and rep Detroit properly. In a Tigers 3 2 win. Tigers with the chance to take this series, and they took the first series of the year. There's a youngster with the Matt Shepard glove. Kyle Farmer goes down swinging. That's the first punch out of the day for Michael Lorenzen. Down to the third member of our broadcast team. Hi, Natalie Kerwin. Hey, Chef. Well, in today's Miller Light report, we have some news on Eduardo Rodriguez. Before yesterday's game, he threw a live BP, three innings, 50 pitches. Jonathan Scope, Kerry Carpenter, Akil Badu, and Riley Green were all out there. And I talked to them this morning. They said, man, did he look like himself. Typical E-Rod, throwing sliders for strikes, spotting everything. Eduardo seemed really encouraged, too. He said everything felt great, felt perfect. AJ even mentioned I was laughing because I actually was sitting in the dugout watching him the whole time. He made sure to come up to me right after to make sure. Sure I saw it all, but they hope to have a plan in place for him in the next 24 hours as he continues to rehab that uh, index finger on his left hand. Yeah, looking forward to getting him back sometime soon. So everybody encouraged all the positive signs. Yeah, the arms got to feel real fresh, huh? Yeah, the next day is always the most important, right? Yeah, probably today you would feel something. Tomorrow is the biggie. Willie Castro with a line drive base hit to right. 
sixth hit in the series the season series for Willie Castro against his old club. Yeah this is pretty much down the middle of the plate I believe. We know he can hit he likes the ball down over the place ready right to swing pass. Single. Minnesota really likes what he's brought to them. The versatility but the work ethic on a day to day basis. Many of that honed right here in Detroit. Here's Joey Gallo. Billy Castro is going to want to steal. You know that for sure. And considering he leads this team in stolen bases a career high 13 for him. You can understand why. Gallo swings and misses. It was all or nothing for Joey Gallo last night. Four at bats, three strikeouts, and a home run. And he's a guy that's got major power. He's had trouble consistently putting getting the barrel on the ball, though. Swung on and missed. The changeup fooled him. It's 0 and 2. Billy Castro was off and shut her down there. You said that was a changeup. You just wonder if he might be peeking in there. If you see him going on off speed pitches. What would he pull here? Pitch con? Yeah, some pitch con issues. Or seemed like that might be a little gray area, you know, pitch con. They need another receiver, I believe. A little staticky. <laughs> They're going to give Baez. Baez will give Lorenzen his. So they'll just swap. Or is it Maton? Every Sunday is Chevy Sunday Kids Day. Join us on Sunday, July 9th when the Tigers face the Blue Jays at 140. Kids 14 and under enjoy free rides on the Hi-Chu Carousel and Ferris Wheel. Plus, post-game kids run the bases. For tickets, go to tigers.com slash tickets. And they are here today in full force as well. Looking forward to a Tigers win and then running the bases, perhaps sliding home. Future Tigers. They hope so. Do they all get pitch cons when they come in? So you can get an education while they're doing that. Wouldn't that? That'd be something, wouldn't it? Well, they're probably going to have to have something like where you can listen in. And you can hear the actual, you know, like they do with the the, the car racing. They, they, you know, they hear ring, yeah. how they're driving on the road. And How's it go? Ring. There you go. That's good. They're hauling. It's 0-2 to Gallo. You saw that little nugget where Gallo 175 homers since 2017 fourth most in the American League only Judge Trout and Jose Ramirez have more during that stretch than this man. But a lot of swings and misses for him. He's got major power. Will he going to go here? There it oh, started to good take by Gallo. It's two and two. Now remember the game Friday. People were really had a few ejections. Mm -hmm. Three. It's going to be a totally different scene with the umpire today. Alfonso Marquez behind the plate. The small zone. The smallest zone. And he's being look at the pitcher's ERA and Oof. make throw it in that keyhole. So as your hitter, do you do you really make sure? You're that patient. I would. They were getting rung up the other night. He gets rung up today. Gallo looks at strike three. A couple of punch outs for Lorenzen in the inning. When we come back, Reese Olsen on his first major league win. He did it on a national stage. Struck out nine twins and joins us from the dugout next. Series because Reese Olson got the Tigers a win last night, his first at the major league level, and he joins us from the dugout. Reese, congratulations. Thank you very much. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. How many times did uh, people text you, call you last night? Uh, who, who, what was some of the feedback after you uh, got into the clubhouse and, and had that uh, that shower of victory, if you will? Uh, you know, a lot of friends and family. Uh, 
there. I'll watch every game. Thankful to have them supporting me every night. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of my friends sending me f funny tweets about me. Uh, I guess people like to make fun of my red cheeks when I pitch. So. <laughs> hey, as long, as long as you're striking out nine and winning games, who really cares? Yeah, who cares? Right? That's right. Hey, A.J. Hinch said something. He said he's been so encouraged by your demeanor as much as anything else because you get a ton of confidence in your slider. But you fall behind and you come back and count. You give up a homer and you bounce back. Where does that stem from, do you think? Right. I think it, and I've talked about this a few times, you know, the how much I struggled to start the year in AAA uh, and just learning learning down there how to react when something doesn't go my way, you know, just trying to trying to stay calm. So let's see, it's just Kirk Gibson, Reese. We talked the other day in the, in the locker room. You're, you're awfully close to that ping pong table. Are they getting you over there yet? You know, I'm, I think me and Whitey, we talk about how bad we are, and we played last year a lot in AA. Uh, we were played doubles a lot, but I think me and Whitey might be two of the worst in the clubhouse. So at one time, what was their hardest pitch to – develop of your arsenal um you know i think it was probably my slider you know trying to trying to find a grip um trying to find one i could throw hard you know it wasn't it wasn't too crazy but uh you know the change up and the sinker and everything came pretty natural to me but it was probably the slider i would say so do you feel you could throw any of your pitches secondary pitches at any time you have total confidence and how can the catcher affect that Right, I mean, I definitely do. You know, my changeup's been a little weird for me uh, the past three starts, and I like to say that's my best pitch. And you know, not having that has been has been a little challenging. But um, you know, I'm I'm still gonna throw that thing. But you know, having the catcher back there and putting down any sign at any time, you know, that that's a lot of confidence for me too as well. You have the highest spin rate of any slider thrown in the major leagues. What do you think the key to that is? Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know if it's, I mean, every guy's a little bit different, but uh, last year, actually, when I moved from the middle of the rubber to the third base side of the rubber, my slider went from about 2,700 to 3,000, 3,100, whatever it is now. Uh, you know, so I don't know, for whatever reason, it jumped up when I went to the third base side. So when, when you threw a couple of your real good sliders and you got bopped in one of your first games did you say wow did it shock you or did did, did you did you expect it and what did what kind of adjustments did you make after that i think the the first one was the acuna homer on the slider that was the big like i guess kind of welcome to the big leagues but you know i still have all the confidence in the world in that pitch well you should i, I know the tigers and tigers fans have a great deal of confidence in you thanks for the time man congratulations last night thank you guys thank you for having me see you on the plane headed to texas and of course, anytime you're on with us, you're gonna get sunflower seeds, whether you like it or not. Scoreless, welcome back to Comerica Park, and we're joined by Casey Herbis, who is the chief marketing officer for Rocket Mortgage, and a huge event coming up at Detroit Golf Club. And I, I think it's so awesome that you guys continue to have this. But the bigger the, 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 the event, the bigger the names. And you guys are getting bigger names. Tell the folks who's going to be out there and why they should go out there and watch these guys. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing week at the Detroit Golf Club. It's our fifth Rocket Mortgage Classic, and we have some of the world's best coming. Uh, first timers like Colin Murakawa, mm -hmm. Justin Thomas, you know, major winners, uh, Ricky Fowler or Tony Finau, Tom Kim, and we got some young guns like the guys that went low at the Masters and U.S. Open amateurs and we cannot wait to, you know, watch them tee it up this week at the Detroit Golf Club. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. You guys do such a great job. I know it's a labor of love, but how important do you think this is to the city of Detroit? And really, if you think about it, the state of Michigan. It is. I mean, Dan Gilbert, it was his vision to bring a PGA Tour event to the city of Detroit. We're one of only two cities in the country that have a PGA Tour event in a city. And so it's a chance to shine a great spotlight on everything that's happening in downtown Detroit and give, you know, the, the fans and citizens of Metro Detroit miles and miles of front row seating to watch the world's best players tee it up. That's awesome. Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, how do you pick? You have amateurs or celebrities and stuff coming to the amateurs. Shep wants to get in there, number one. Okay. What Shep's, yeah, well, uh, Shep can come and play. We got him. And you too, Gibby. Yeah, well, I went there one day, and I hit one. Uh, we were playing alternating shot. I hit one about 80 yards up and 10 yards down. But I... I was looking at these people down besides me. That's pretty dangerous for them. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, listen, 80-yard shot is good when you've got 80 yards of the hole. Off the tee, that's going to be a, make for a long hole. 
These guys seem to shoot pretty low. Do you guys like it like that? And if so, why do you think that is important? Because we all want to see home runs and different things, but especially in golf. Yeah, I mean, most often the guys that are going to win, you know, be at the top of the leaderboard at the Rock Mortgage Classic are going to be in that 20 to 25 under. And, you know, it's pretty exciting to, you know, for an everyday golfer to get out there and they watch someone go 5, 10, 12 under during the course of the day and kind of like loving the high, high scoring games and people love to see golfers go low and, they're going to have that chance at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. So they like to see the long drives and stuff like that. And what about, what's the format that, um, if it's, you have a tie, do yeah. you have a, is it just a plain win a hole? Or yeah, so when, if there's a tie, they go to a sudden sudden playoff death. And so they'll go to, from hole to hole to hole. It's, uh, two or three years ago, we ended up going six extra holes so that's and, uh, nice. until the end of the winter. So, hey, we'd love if there's a uh, tie that just means more golf and, you know, more chance for people to see golf. But we'll see. I think it's going to be an exciting week, and we'll find out around 6 o'clock on Sunday who's our fifth champion at the uh, Rocket Mortgage Classic. Two and two to Michael Taylor with a man aboard and nobody out here in the Minnesota third. Every year, the Rocket Mortgage Classic does something different for fans, for golfers, for those out there attending. What are you doing differently this year? One the of the things, great question. One of the things we're doing is on Thursday, uh, it is called Bowtie Day. Bowtie Day, you know, our chairman and founder, Dan Gilbert, uh, their son, Nick Gilbert, unfortunately, passed away recently. And it's, a, it's an, a chance to not only honor Nick Gilbert, who is such an amazing young man, but uh, also, you know, be, be able to raise money for uh, NF Ford, which helps address neurofibromatosis, which, of which Nick uh, Nick was afflicted with, and so it's a great day to again, honor Nick, but also raise money for NF Ford. So, what if, where do people have to go to, to if they don't have tickets? Or where do they go, and where are the best places, in your opinion, some special places where they can hang? Yeah, so uh, tickets are available now. They're going fast. They just go. People can go to RocketMortgageClassic.com, RocketMortgageClassic.com to get tickets. And what's really cool, Gibby, is if you think about a golf tournament. Nowhere else in sports can you literally have miles and miles of front row seating. And so you get to see these players as up and close as personal as you want, which is pretty cool. I mean, there's no, there's no other sporting events like that. Vasquez in just under the tag, testing Jake Marisnik twice on deep fly ball outs. And now he's 90 feet away from the game's first run. Well, it's really two in a row. They can say going right in your face here in outfield and you want to get this guy. Good slide right there. Give him credit. Maybe without the quality slide, he doesn't make it. He's not that fast. But he's playing the game. What are the Tigers going to do here? Are they going to gobble him up? Let's see if they can get Donovan Solano. Uh, another thought from you on the nonprofits. I know you guys are really big into that. So what can you tell us about that and what Rocket Mortgage Classic does for the nonprofits in the area. Yeah, so that, this is a great opportunity, again, not to only shine a spotlight on the city, but to help raise money for Area 313, uh, 313 Connect. You know, when the pandemic happened, it shined an unfortunate spotlight that over 60% of Detroit residents did not have access to the internet. And you think about how that affects not only school children, but people looking for jobs and the world we now live in with telemedicine. And we're really proud over the last three years We've helped close that gap. We're now at 70% of people, the residents of Detroit, have access to the internet. And we still have miles to go, but that's a big, big part of our uh, efforts at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. This one launched to deep left field. Back goes Veerling, and he will watch that one fly away. A two-run homer for Donovan Solano. Minnesota has drawn first blood here in Detroit in the third on a two-run blast. That was like a Colin Morikawa six iron into the into the green. That was a hanger right and there. The laser beam. Unfortunately. Looked like a slider didn't do much. Spun right down the heart of the plate. Recognized it well. Those go out on their own. Look at Jake Rogers' re reaction behind the plate right there. He just knows it right away. Smacked it. 420 feet. His second homer against the Tigers this year. 2 nothing Twins. Talking with Casey Herbis, the chief marketing officer for Rocket Mortgage, as they get ready for a huge tournament. Love the names. We talked about that, but a lot of times certain names don't get mentioned. This one down the right field line foul are your volunteers, and you've got a ton of them. 
don't you? Yeah, I mean, there's a, oh, almost 2,000 volunteers that really keep the keep the tournament from the very beginning to the end going, and it's from parking inside the ropes. My daughter standard bears during the week. It's awesome. It's a great family event. It's a it's a great opportunity for people that love golf to spend time at the course. Young people, again, what what a great opportunity for people to see the action up close and personal and. It's like anything else. All the hard work we do for the Rock and Classic, a lot of it cannot get done without, you know, 2,000 volunteers. How much have you noticed it taking root, like becoming something that is the thing to do at this time of the year in Detroit? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's our fifth year, and we get a chance to go out and go to other tournaments and talk to players. Players, you know, five years ago, we were asking everyone to come to Detroit. Now when we're on the road talking to players, they're asking about, hey, when can I come? And I'm going to be back next year. And it's awesome. It's, it's become a you know a staple in the Detroit sporting community, and so awesome to you know think about all the great things that are happening in downtown Detroit, including the Tigers, and you know the fireworks are this week, and the IndyCar race. It's just more and more is happening in our city, and we're proud to be have that as part of the, with the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Really required a vision. And the vision is coming true fruition. Michael Lorenzen strikes out Correa to end the case. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate Thank it. You so and much. good luck. I mean, congratulations thanks. on all the great work there and continued success. Thank you. We so love much. talking about it. Pride of Detroit for sure. Two nothing twins through two and a half. Season tickets. Join the 1901 Society to secure the best seats at Comerica Park. Enjoy discounts on concessions and a whole lot more. It's not too late to become a member. To secure your spot, go to Tigers.com slash membership. Matt Veerling leads off the Tigers third. It's the bottom third of the Tigers order. Jake Rogers to follow and Jake Marisnik after that. To the right side. And under the glove of a sliding Kyle Farmer, Matt Veerling leads off the third with the Tigers first hit of the day. That's good. Tigers need to come back, get some pressure, have not getting any runs or any rallies going early of late. Matt Veerling is... Got a nice swing where he's letting the ball tell me get nice and deep. He's not pulling off it. Rewarded with the single. Again, we I talked earlier about getting a good pitch. If you hit a line drive, you know you're doing things right. You hit a ball up the gap, you know you're doing things right. We just have to get better pitches. Rogers delivers down like the left that. field line. That'll roll to the wall. Veerling's going to be held at third. Rogers trots in with a double. There Tigers go. starting to answer right back. Gibby, that's a good sign. Yeah, there, there you go right there. Ball's up in the zone. A little bit of a hang. Look at That's a mistake. It's right down the middle of the plate. Jake Rogers down to the corner. Veerling on his horse over to third. Jake on to second. See, he's got to go, and then he gets the shutdown. Mr. Jones. If you're a runner, you want to be full speed, you got to be ready to shut it down, and you, Matt Verling was. Jake Marisnik follows it back. Situational hitting here, Gibby. You talk about it on a regular basis. With runners at second and third and nobody out. What's the key thing for Jake Marisnik in this at bat? Get a good pitch and don't you know, don't miss it. You can't pull off a pitch. You took a look at all the hits and all the outs. You're going to see the hits. You usually stay through it. You stay behind it. Ball has more carry, whether it's a fly ball, a climbing fly ball, which has backspin and it goes up or a line drive. Ground balls generally mean you got jammed or you're topping it. Got to stay back. You can't be jumping at that split change up. Down the left field line, but pulled foul. You look right here. Watch his swing. He does a real good job. Watch him stay with it. He holds on to the bat. He holds on to it. He holds on to it. There you go. You can't pull off that. Look at this. Is good. Keep that bat in the in the zone. I'll get her done. Another 0-2 is fouled back. And then there's the fastball. You're maybe a little tardy because you're kind of half. Protected against this good changeup. One of his best pitches. You foul it off. That's give yourself for a good at bat. And good at bats, they're not good, they can't be great unless they have a good result. Just got a piece of that. 
I know you're hoping the Tigers score at least three because if they do, you can visit a participating Arby's location tomorrow and receive a free small order of curly fries. 3 2 the final last night, so you got some fries earlier today. I like the, 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 the Tigers to score 15 today. How's that? That doesn't mean you get five sets of fries, but mm -hmm. uh, you'll get at least one. One and two to Jake Marisnik. Total waste pitch there. They're going to come in probably or get elevation. That ball came out of his hand, the ball all the way. Low and away, two and two. Nice to throw that change up as you see again right there. Remember, as you get the fastball, foul it off. Don't panic. Get a piece. Eighth pitch of the at bat for Jake Marisnik coming here. Fouled away. You're putting pitches on over his arm. There you see the sequence. The more pitches he throws, the more you see it. The flatter and the more chance he has of making a mistake. This all plays into the later in the game thing. Keep it going. Got him way out in front. Slider gets Marisnik. That's the first out of the third. Took a little bit off of this. A little different look. He starts it high. Looks more like a fastball. There you can see the grip. Out front. Second strikeout for Bailey Ober today. Zach McKinstry now hoping to get the job done. Down the right field line, and that'll do. Zach McKinstry will roll into second. He's got himself a two RBI double. We are tied at two. Check this swing out. I mean, this is incredible. This ball is right under his hands. Watch how he drops this bat head straight down towards the ground. Look at this. This is not a long swing. This ball is right in on his belly button. It's short down into the corner. Way to pick your teammate up. That ball is inside. Look at that. Straight down. That's that's what they work on in the cage all the time, every day. And there's how you execute it in the game. Now Spencer Torkelson hoping to give the Tigers the lead. Fouled away. One and one to Torkelson, who flew off to center his first time up. Again, we're looking for the same thing. Good swing. Short path. And you want to see. Don't pull off. You work on it every day on the tee, on the flips. Take it into the game. To center field for Taylor. McKinstry acted like he was tagging only to get the throw in there are two away here we go carp let's go two away for Kerry Carpenter he, he hit one off the end on a change of his first at bat into center field. Get the heater first pitch. Rolls it foul. Breaker. Bailey over is really good. You can tell he's tall. He's got a lanky motion and he really varies the speed of his pitches. But beyond the movement, he's got the pitches. 
in the, the variation of speed. On the inside rail, 0 and 2 to Carpenter. Takes it low, it's one and two. Yep. Down the right field line again. McKinstry getting the wheel home. Here comes Gallo's throw, not in time. Carpenter down to second. He's in there safely. The Tigers have the lead. See if they, I think he was interfered down there. Carp down there, second base. Well, he finally got. Look at he stays back. That long, almost back knees him. Kinsley. Thought this was going to be pretty close. Got around there pretty quickly. And you're going to see Carp going on down the second. You see that throw go home. A couple outs, you're always willing to trade your run for an out. Carpenter continues to roll. Again, a good example of how you see he kept those hands back. He had a big step out front. Long, link, lengthy swing. Gets it through the infield. Tigers now lead 3 2. Now Javier Baez digs in. This will be Ober's 20th pitch of the inning. Up Whoa. and in to knock him down, one and all. Good morning. For some players, that just makes him dig in a little bit more. Let's see how if it affects Baez at all. Two and all. Throw like a BP fastball this night. You'd be shocked if he threw Javi Baez a fastball here. If you want to sit as a player right here, you got to sit for something up and let it come. Cued it foul. That was the changeup. Yeah, 81. Feet. Not many pitchers throw right on right changeups or left on left changeups. It overdoes. That was on a 2 0 count. Big cut and a miss at a fastball to make it 2 and 2. He struck him out, but the Tigers take the lead. Three runs on four hits. It started with Veerling and Rogers. It was culminated by McKinstry's two-run double and an RBI single from Kerry Carpenter. 3-2 Detroit after three. I don't know if you saw this last night, but the Angels beating Colorado 25 to 1 on 28 hits. The Angels had a 13 run inning. They set franchise records for runs and hits. They scored two in the second, 13 in the third, eight in the fourth, and so on. Get this the 24 point loss would have been the second most for the Broncos in the NFL in two years, and fifth most by the Nuggets in the NBA. Boy, you wouldn't be, want to be on the wrong side of that. No. That's a track meet. Oof. <laughs> The Tigers will be going to Colorado. After this game here today, they will travel to Texas. They'll take on the Rangers for four in a row and then the Rockies for three straight. 
Mile High City. Mm -hmm. All of them right here on Valley Sports. Hope you can join us. I'll join you. Well, I would hope so. Get some of that thin air out there. What are we going to do? Go for a nice long walk in the mountains. We? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that tells, me, it, that it, tells no. me where I stand. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is Royce Lewis leading off the inning. That was very close to you right there. Get your club on. Yeah, I had somebody tell me that not too long ago. They said, you know, with all the baseballs hit close to your booth, you should wear a glove. Thing like, is, you, you, know, you lose sight of it when it comes up here. Come on, come on, get it. This is punch to right. A leadoff single. No, my point was, I, you, you don't keep score. And I have a headset and do all the things we do with a glove on. And by the time a ball might be followed up this way, it might be a little challenging to locate the glove and put it on before you make the catch. You leave it on. You don't take it off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't, that's going to be. You have to learn how to write with a glove. <laughs> <laughs> so Lewis is aboard to start the inning. Seven game hit streak for him. This is Kyle Farmer who struck out in the second. He was the first of three strikeout victims for Michael Lorenzen today. In there for a strike. And it's one of one. Didn't miss by much two and one. Willie Castro to follow for the Twins here in the fourth. That's tapped foul. Pretty good pitches at the corner right there. Michael Rinson. Doesn't seem like he loses his composure too much on the mound. He stays with it, believes in his pitches, doesn't labor. Yeah, I think he's pretty well grounded. It is interesting, though, Gibby, nine years as a major leaguer, and Michael Lorenzen is making his first start against Minnesota. It's his fourth appearance, but first ever start against the Twins. With the way the schedule's been over time, it's, it's much better now. Everybody plays everybody. I agree. Did he go? He did. He'll sit down out number one here in the fourth. Comes via the strikeout, Kyle Farmer. Did he go? Oh, yeah. Got that bad head way out. Broke that plane. Not much of an argument from Farmer either. Lance Barrett down there at second base. He's ringing him up. He, yes! There's Willie Castro who's singled his first time up back pick, but Lewis is in safely. Yeah, that's hard from down there when you're an umpire to, to really see it. We see it in slow motion a lot on our replays, but he's looking into the dugout right now, Lance Barrett. Not a favorite after the ejections a couple games ago. The Twins. Three and oh to Willie Castro. On the 1 0 pitch, Willie Castro just took all the way, just put the bat right on his shoulder. It's a little different than he did here. He's got some confidence, it looks like. Not going to just be afraid to give it up a strike. He's on board for the second time today. Two men aboard for Joey Gallo. Time for StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Gallo going yard in the seventh inning last night. 
and he ripped it 425 feet for home run number 12 on the year. We don't want to see that again, obviously. Get ahead with him, he will chase. A little high. 1 0 to Gallo, who struck out looking in the second. Showed that it was right at the top of the line. No gift. That's it. That's outside 2 0. Jake Marisnik was telling me before the game Gallo when the ball comes off his bat it can be challenging to read much like Chris Davis who used to hit homers for Baltimore. And he was telling me about how he reads the spin of the baseball as it's in the air. You try but if it's a knuckleball what are you going to read. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens sometimes. But it is amazing what outfielders. That's what where he's looking gauge. from right there. Yeah. A little low but how they're dealing with the sun sometimes cloudy skies that can be difficult to pick up baseballs white shirts in well, the stands right white shirts you're reading swings the communication and kind of a milky sky here today Gallo pops this one up sky high Baez drifting over lets it drop it's the infield fly rule was in effect anyway he just wanted to give the crowd a uh oh moment that's all Two away, and before Vasquez digs in, a message from Rally House. Play ball, Michigan. Shop the latest in Tiger style with your favorite brands and throwback designs. Rally House has gear for every fan. There's Christian Vasquez, who singled and rode home on the Donovan Solano homer in the third. Fouled away. A little high one and one. So Baez let that ball drop Gibby. Obviously the infield fly hoping that if it wasn't called you drop it you can turn it into two. How often have you seen that work. I don't know if I've ever seen it work right. but you try and get the guys to run off after that they're going at their own risk. But it's not going to hurt not going to hurt him not to do it. But now the outfields had some water on it. I've seen some fields where those things bounce away from you too. So the runners have to they 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 can advance at their own risk, their own peril. So if it doesn't just stop like that, the, the ground's not soft. You could get yourself in some trouble. You could hit a sprinkler head or something like that. Sure. The drainage. That ball was up there. Gallo his elevator shaft. <laughs> Bomb right there. It does. It's a long time for that to come down. Getting a little muggy here too. Certain, and I found the ball traveled really well in muggy days. Humid. Two and two to Christian Vasquez. Now if you're the outfielders here, do you cheat in? You can see the. Yeah, the wind, the wind's definitely a factor out there. The gaps, so if you're thinking of cheating in to try and cut somebody down at the plate, you might be giving up another run. Ground ball up the middle. Diving stop made by Baez. He'll try to get him at first, wow. and he did. How did that just happen? Thought about eating it because he thought everyone was going to be safe, but then showed off the howitzer. And gets Vasquez by a half a step to end the inning. Put that one on the highlight reel. Beauty. Here, Baez, the way he ended the fourth, Gibby, he threw this ball at 83 miles an hour. Well, he reached as far as he could. Look, he tried to throw it to second, but he didn't have a means to get it out of the glove. Look at it, he says, I got time. In a bullet in a rocket. Boom. Here you go. 
Vasquez telling him, how did you make that play? Yeah, well, maybe tell him that it's coming next time and he'll let it go. <laughs> Nick Maton leads off the Tigers fourth, still up a run, and it's because of what Baez just did to end the fourth. That was, just think of the, how quickly he had to make that decision. Just think in second, realized he didn't have him there on the third or on the first. And that, like you said, the, the arm strength, you can see the ability he has that most don't. I would guess there's a part of him that also thought about just eating it. Just let the bases be loaded and get the next man. But whatever the case, it was the right decision. Yeah, and a he, great play. He could feel that he had a throw, and you could see it in the result. Maton sends one to center. Taylor He's started back, now comes in, and it's too late to recover. Maton is aboard with a leadoff single in the fourth. Well, this is the wind. It's really coming good. Here's where he's coming from. And then we want to watch Nick Maton. He might have got caught. Not running hard all the way. Look at it. It's coming up. He thinks it's right to him in center field. And all of a sudden, that wind's pushing against him. And Nick Maton gets it a little. Nut. So when you're struggling and some of them you get robbed, that makes it worth it. Baez tried to ambush him. Popped up left side of the infield. Lewis takes care of it. Want all the inside scoop on your Detroit Tigers? Then make sure to follow Bally Sports Detroit on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Here's Matt Fearling. He got it started for the Tigers in the third when they plated their three runs. He singled and scored. That was a four-hit inning for Detroit, highlighted by the two-run double from McKinstry and the RBI single from Kerry Carpenter. I like Maton running right here. One oh count. Probably gonna throw him something off speed. In the dirt two and oh to Veerling, who had last night off until he was a pinch runner and a defensive replacement in the ninth. Two oh you're not gonna see it. You've been throwing change ups. 2-0. However, this is right on right. So maybe something like a slider. Swung on and missed. Was the changeup. 2-0, he's been throwing pretty much all changeups. Hit a gapper. Watch Maytime. Boogie around the bases. Three and one now to Veerling. Again, I, I like sending them here. I feel like Veerling's got a good enough eye that he won't hang out in Nick Mayton. He doesn't have a real big lead there. He should try and get a big lead. That's a check swing foul. Mm -hmm. We had leg kick there. Let's get him. Easy for me to say, sitting here in the booth. <laughs> it all looks easy from here. Get off. Well, he's been struggling a little bit, Nick Mayton. You get a stolen base, it all adds to positivity. Yeah. There he goes. And Beerling spoils it. <laughs> Now, Maytown right there, when you're running like this, you want to take a peek when the when your teammates hit the ball so you know where it's going. I don't know if he didn't look or if he turned late. So you, you got to gotta give a peek here. Or you're going to get deked. Three, two, count one out, same way. Three steps and a peek. Overs is going to throw it quick. He's not going to hold it. Watch. Be ready. There he goes again. Peerling strikes out. The throw from Vasquez. 
on time. It's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. And that's how the inning ends for Detroit. But they lead it by a run. We are through four at Comerica Park on Valley Sports. At odds, well, they bumped it up a little bit. Pre-game total was eight. Now they expect more than nine in this game. It's a 3-2 Tigers lead as we enter the fifth. It's interesting that FanDuel has bumped it up a run and a half. Trying to balance the books, looks like. <laughs> I don't know. It's just something I heard one day. <laughs> this is Michael A. Taylor. <laughs> He leads off the uh, Minnesota fifth, and then it's Edward Julian and Donovan Solano. Taylor motor's pretty good. You get the ball hit, you want to get to it quick. Slams one right center field. Drifting over is McKinstry. He's got it. And there's one away. Well, McKinstry's done a nice job in right field, usually more of an middle infielder to a third baseman, but he has played so well in right field. Remember, Matt Vierling was such a plus defender in right field. He went down. Many people wondered, how is Detroit going to survive that? Well, McKinstry has kind of picked up where Veerling left off. And A.G. Hinch has so much confidence in it, it allows Veerling to move to left. Down the right field line, that'll roll to the wall. That'll be a one-out double for Edward Julian. Well, you saw that good. He leaned on that. Off speed up over the middle of the plate. Nothing you can do. Make sure you get to it. Make a good throw. Stop mid second. Second hit for Julian, and here's Donovan Solano, who hit a two run homer in the third. That gave Minnesota the two nothing lead before Detroit responded with three in their half of the inning. That's that where a, we stand. Yeah, that was a hanger. He, he didn't miss it. For Solano, it was his third home run of the season and his second against Detroit. Two and one. Up the middle and a base hit. Get him. They'll hold the runner at third. Julian there. Solano stays at first. Runners at the corners after the second hit of the day for Donovan Solano. Solano looks like he's seeing everything. Breaking ball up out over the plate. He finds a hole. Right up the middle. And that's enough for Chris Fetter to jump out and have a chat with Michael Lorenzen. Also will give Will Vest a little more time to warm up. He's hurrying his pregame routine. Suit up this season at MLBShop.com. Check out the largest selection of authentic caps, t-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Detroit Tigers at the MLBShop.com. Get you a nice white Tiger jersey. Get it dirty like the pros, huh? You're a little kid. I bet you you were dirty all the time. Sliding out there in the backyard. You had never had the home jersey. That would have been a nice thing to have as a kid. I, I don't think I would have ever worn that, though, while playing the Sandlot baseball. What about the old wool? Warm, huh? Yeah. But it, it's fun to get dirty, you know? Yeah, wore those Same hats out, Football though. in the mud as well. Oh, it's yeah. Good. Hockey, no. Unless <laughs> it's blood. Correa takes strike one. Correa bounced into a double play in the first, and Michael Lorenz would take that here. Need another one, yes. Struck him out last time up. 
yanked foul. Carlos Correa looks like he's starting to stay back a little bit more and getting better swings at pitches. He had a home run just before they started the series. And homered last night as well. Good block by Rogers. Jake Rogers wonder how they can get over there so quick. Well, they know what pitch is coming, so they know where to smother it at. Some catchers over time have done that on purpose. Called for it, tried to get the runner at first to go and cut him down. Ground ball to short could be two. The flip to Ibanez. It is second double play of the day induced by Michael Lorenzen. And it's huge here in the fifth. Six, four, three to end the inning and end the threat. Stay tuned for the Miller Time update right after this message from our friends at Miller Life. Hey, Tigers fans, our 15 pack includes more than just 15 delicious Miller Lights. Scan the pack's QR code for a chance to win Detroit Tigers tickets and gear to help you celebrate this season Miller style. So what are you waiting for, Tigers fans? It's Miller Time. Affiliate, the Erie Seawolves celebrating last night, not just a win, but clinching the first half Southwest Division Championship. It's a big deal because it guarantees the Erie Seawolves a playoff spot and the right to host games two and three of the Southwest Division Championship. That makes it back to back playoff appearances for the Tigers AA affiliate and their manager, Gabe Alvarez. <laughs> hey, so proud of you guys. Hey, to think of where we were after a month into the season to where we are now, you guys did a tremendous job. Love all you guys. Let's have fun tonight. Let's go. Oh, what a great scene what last great night scene. in Erie, Simo. And anytime you can clinch at any level, it's worth celebrating. Well, well, there's no question about that, Mick. It means a lot to these players. Uh, when they're on the grind, the way they're grinding, trying to make it to the big leagues. And any time that you can celebrate those small victories, learning how to win together, it only bleeds over into the big leagues. When you get here, you understand what it takes. And I think these guys are going to really take this. And there's something that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives, giving them the opportunity to win in double leg. And then who knows, a lot of those kids are going to get a chance to play here in Detroit and hopefully win another championship. I know you celebrated some good team at Great times time when you were with the Toledo and of course eventually up here with the big club in Detroit. Matt, give it. Congratulations to Erie, the best road team in the Eastern League at 23 and 14. A couple of years ago, Erie was thought to be going to be eliminated, remember? Yeah, I remember that. The big minor league plan, but they survived. They put a lot of money into that stadium down there, so good for the city of Erie. Yeah, it is beautiful. Remember, Erie was 8 and 13 after April. ERA was the worst in the league in that month. And then suddenly it took off. Some really good, uh, you know, Mickey just talked about a really good job, you know, by Gabe Alvarez. Credit to Ryan Garko, the VP of Player Development, too, for putting that team together. Colt Keith, 21 multi hit games. That leads the team in our homers and RBIs as well. And the pitching has been really good. So congratulations to the Seawolves. Keep it up. Jake Rogers follows it away. Dylan Dingler's return was big. And he was part of that celebration. What a great picture that is. Additions of Justice Bigby and Chris Myers over the last couple of weeks has been big. Just names for you to look up. A young talent in the Tigers organization. Yeah, you want to develop a attitude of confidence here in the team and that's that's what it does and everybody talks about how good you are you don't have to do it yourself anymore. Rogers has worked at full. He doubled and scored in the third. Strike uh, three called Rogers thought he had a free pass instead he'll turn around head back to the dugout one away. That was borderline, borderline down and away, right in the corner. That's an outstanding pitch. 
too close to take. Maybe that yeah, says it caught the edge. Five strikeouts now for Bailey Ober. And here's Jake Marisnik. Jake Marisnik. Opportunity again out there in center field. He is so good defensively. Over's making some nasty pitches, really ones you'd want to take. Nothing you can do with them. Two and one to Marisnik. Hang it. Fouls it back. A little bit of a hanger there, except it didn't get there quite as quickly as you think as a hitter. Strikes out for the second time today, and there's two away. This is right on the corner, then breaks off. You kind of see how the sequences work. Sometimes it is outside, sometimes it appears it's outside, only to come back and get the corner. Zach McKinstry had the big blow in the third, a two run double that tied it up, and then he scored what is right now the difference in the ball game on Kerry Carpenter's RBI single. One and one. Now behind in the count. Uh, the twins are getting all the close calls right now on the edges. Ober strikes out the side. Tigers go in order for the third time today, and we are through five in Detroit with the Tigers upper run. Heating, cooling, and electrical. He owns, absolutely owns Minnesota. A 302 batting average, 166. Runs driven in in his career against the Twins and 265 hits in his career against Minnesota. He's even better batting average wise at target field against the Twins. The big target field? The big target field. And Cabrera last night, 0 for 3, walked and scored a run in the Tigers 3 2 win. His milestone numbers. The don't figure to be changing at least today because he's not in the lineup. He winner. Got a new pitcher. It's Will Vest in a wall side windows pitching change. Well, Michael Lorenzen stretched as far as he could. Hot out there, probably watching his numbers a little bit. And Will Vest, this is really, they've been using him 289 ERA, kind of middle to the late innings, and he does get some leverage. Assignments, and this will be one of them. Tigers leading by a run. Here with four innings to go. We got to keep that lead and add on. And he gets the four, five, and six hitters. Lorenzen threw 86 pitches, 54 of them for strikes. Vest starts Royce Lewis out 0 and 2. You and I were talking about Minnesota's bullpen and how good it has been. The Tigers bullpen has shined very well and brightly this year. And Vest has been a key part of it. That's for certain. Yep. And they've interchanged the pieces up and down from the minor leagues to the major leagues. And it's been a good ascent for many of the youngsters. Remember, you're trying to put guys in position where they can succeed. And bringing him in in the clean inning here. It's the middle of the order. Yeah, he did. Oh. First base umpire Ramon De Jesus says he didn't. Huh. From here it looks like but way up. No, he kept a bad head bad. Takes, My bad. Takes some strength right there. 
lifted deep left field but foul. Fouled the other way. Lewis was Minnesota's first round pick, number one overall in the 2017 draft. Base hit, center field. Second hit of the day for Royce Lewis. Join the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame on Thursday, September 14th for the Class of 2023 induction ceremony. Right there at Soundboard and Motor City Casino Hotel when they welcome in Michigan sports greats such as Richard Hamilton, former Red Wing captain Henrik Zetterberg. Tickets start at just $25. Visit mshof.org for tickets and more information. And, of course, my partner is in the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame, and rightfully so. Well, it's a big it's honor it's for you, right? Yeah, it's just in the right place at the right time with the right teammates. Well, you had to do something. Yeah, followed orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have a little bit of pride. And you you want to do well. Two and zero to Kyle Farmer. Tyler Holton hasn't been used in a while. He's starting to warm up. Shot here. Much needed strike two and one. Popped up. Ibanez calls for it. That's a big out for the first out here in the sixth. Yeah, Minnesota does a decent job of. They don't get a lot of hits and they do strike out a lot, but they do have times when they put together three hits and they get a run or two. So here you got runner on base with one down. Get that double play and let's get out of here. Two, two double plays so far today have been important for the Tigers to keep the Twins at bay. Willie Castro standing in. He's been on base twice, singled in the second, walked in the fourth. Takes a low strike 0 and 1. That's outside 1 and 1. Ruby Castro likes that fastball, likes to get in ahead of the count. And get the barrel on the on the heater. Got to throw him backwards. Two and one. Don't want to walk in. In the air center field, Mariznik reads it well. He's got it. And there's out number two. Yeah, you can see the outfield flag up and down, changing directions. Those balls right there, they get, looks like he got knocked down a little bit. And Mariznik quickly gets it back in for no advance by the Twins. A.J. Hinch is going to go back to his bullpen. He wants the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. Tyler Holton will come in for the first time in a week when we come back. He is refreshed. And a wall side windows pitching change. It's his 23rd appearance, but first appearance in a week. The last time he was on the bump was against Minnesota. And here's the Tigers bullpen report. You see who's fresh, who's available for A.J. Hinch today. 
Will Vest has already been in the ball game. Holton now in as well. Yeah, look at Alex Lang down there. 28 pitches on 624. Was that it was a four out save last night? Would you use him? Maybe for a guy. I don't think you'd want to go too deep because you might be taking a chance on getting him a little sore. Holton against Joey Gallo. Good stop by Rogers. It's one and one. Now AJ Hinch is thinking lefty on lefty. He likes it better this way. Also, I think he likes what it does as far as stopping the stolen base as well. You can guess if you guess right, you got a chance if you just go on first move. But to read it, it's going to be much tougher. That's up high. Two of Gallo's 12 homers have come against left handed pitching. Went for the downs there, came up empty. Now two and two. Big swing, big man. A little long in that, unable to catch up. Good spot right there by the Tigers on Gallo. He got him swinging. Second time the Gallo has struck out in the ball game. And Holton comes in, gets the job done. Torkelson hoping to do the same, leading off the Tiger Six. Three, two. There are three runs coming in the third. Matt Vierling started it with a base hit. Then Jake Rogers followed with a double down the left field line. After an out, Zach McKinstry drilled a two run double into the right field corner and then with two away Kerry Carpenter brought him home to give the Tigers the lead 3 2 and that's where we stand entering the bottom of the sixth and it'll be Torkelson Carpenter and Baez due up for Detroit twins have out hit the Tigers with the Tigers lead in the more important category and we hope it continues with Kirk Gibson Natalie Kerwin Craig Monroe Mickey York I'm Matt Shepard welcome on a Sunday afternoon glad you're with us. Gibby, these have been close games for the most part all season long with Minnesota. Tigers have played just well enough right now in all facets. They they've played very well pretty much down down the stretch or when it counted all year. Torkelson with a shot right center field. Taylor catches up to it one away. Yeah, early, early swing. But you know, you gotta put the ball in play, you gotta force your opponent and uh, you have to take care of the ball when they hit it to you and it, you know the bullpen the Minnesota we know it's very uh, strong in the back end the Tigers are going to have to match it but uh, hey that's why you make it so tight let's get a bunch of runs this thing. what do you think well I'd love to see that easier uh, said than done yeah you, you wanted them to be a little bit more patient see a few more pitches in general do you think that's happened to your satisfaction so far I, I, I think that you have to self evaluate yourself okay. If you hit a ball hard in general, if you look at it, there's a reason. You got a good pitch, you stayed back, you did things that you practice on. I don't like early early pitch rollovers out of the front foot. I think that you, you have to to be a good hitter or, or to at least improve as a hitter. You need to be totally comfortable going no balls and two strikes. And there's, there's ways to survive in that count. And until you force yourself to do that, I think it's going to be slower than. Um, I, I think the progress is slower that way. You have to put yourself in these situations and deal with them just like the 3 0 count. Some guys are they're scared of uh, uh, nervous about that. Count. But once you do it for a while, you start to gain a piece about yourself. And you have a better swing at it. Look at we look at the home plate shot from center field. You know where the pitches are going to be over the plate in the middle of the zone. You got a chance to pound it. A better chance to do that than if you're on the edges or if it's a changeup. Right in the middle there. Right where the, right where the catcher's gloves going to be. So I guess 
Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> I think that was a yes. Yeah, I, I think they've made progress and just push it harder because you have a lot. You're, you're all better than you know. Baez swings and misses. He struck out last time on and is grounded to first as well. Popped up. Long run for Gallo. Won't get there. It's foul. There's, there's, there's not a guy that's not going to swing at bad pitches. Looks like we got a little activity down in the Twins bullpen. They're getting ready to move on to that part of their game. Well, that was a big up. pitch last night. So it could be back to back appearances for Jordan Belazovic. I mean, the, the whole thing about being a hitter is being patient, having confidence that you're going to pound something that they make a mistake. Spit on that two and two. This You learn this like Roger Craig, the late Roger Craig. But he was, we, we all came up. He, there was five of us. He made us sit on the, up there in the front. He'd point things out. So we, we talked it all the time. I'm not saying these guys aren't, but you just can't ever let your guard down. You just never can stop trying to get better. It's the only way you're going to get better. Baez strikes out for the second time today. There's two away. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Returning AZ Plan trade-in lessees can lease a Ford F-150 for $4.79 a month for 24 months with only $4.79 cash to its signing at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer. Man on two away for Nick Maton, who singled his last time up. In the dirt. I saw Nick Maton try to bunt yesterday. And uh, I, I don't mind that, but right now I think he's he's hitting the ball out of the ballpark. It's what we're looking for now with a little two out. No button this time. Let's try and hit it out of the ballpark. Boom. Six home runs on the year for Maton. I think many of us know what is going through and how hard it is to learn how to play. Better than your opponent. One and two to him. But it doesn't mean you don't continually try and figure it out and try something different. So if you just keep doing it wrong and it doesn't work, it's not going to probably work. You know, you got to never know who might it might be Richie Hebner who tells you gives you a tip Enos Cabell the grave digger AJ Hinch you just never know you listen to everybody you measure it you apply it sometimes sometimes you don't two and two Mayton has had a tough time with the off speed pitches I know how it feels. He's, he's jumpy. He's trying to stay back. Just that one feel, that one success may turn him on. Has not homered since June 5th, a span of 17 games. Tough take, three and two. Ooh. He's off the plate a couple inches. See that front hip though bailing a little bit? Front hip's got to stay in there. And when that front hip comes, that back side comes. Don't want that. To right field. Gallo drifting back. He's got it, and the inning is over. We're through six here in Detroit. Tigers clinging to a 3-2 lead on Bally Sports.
Update on today's FanDuel same game parlay. Tigers currently covering the spread up by a run here going into the seventh. Andy Abanez still needed a hit, but Michael Lorenzen, he needed at least five strikeouts. Unfortunately, ended his day with four. So today's parlay will not hit Shep. So unfortunate. Ah, maybe next time. Tomorrow in Texas. We'll see if that parlay will hit. Christian Vasquez leads off the seventh for Minnesota. Then it'll be Michael Taylor and Edward Julian. Three runs on five hits, no errors for Detroit. Two, eight, and zero for the Twins. Vasquez handles the bat pretty good. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. He singled and scored in the third. And then in the fourth, he made a bid to tie it, only to have Javier Baez steal away a base hit and to add insult to injury, Thunder. threw him out by firing an 83 mile an hour fastball over to first. Down goes Vasquez to start the seventh. Likes that fastball. You can see Tigers going with breaking stuff, slider down to the dirt. He gets the strikeout. Here's Michael A. Taylor. That is, by the way, six strikeouts for the Tigers staff. Coming into play today, they had struck out 10 or more in a franchise record number of games. Pretty impressive on what the staff has been able to do. When you think about it. But nine consecutive games in which they've struck out 10 or more is a little bit in jeopardy here on this Sunday afternoon. When you think about how that's done. You, some might think it's just stuff. You just rear them back and they're throwing. The reality of it is it's just the opposite. We've seen guys throw 100 over 100 miles an hour, give it up. You say, how can they hit that ball so fast? But if you're flying open, you're showing the ball early, guys get a, a look at it, they see it come out of your hand, you're slowing your arm down, you're 2 0 and I have to throw one down the middle. So you got to give the Tigers credit. That doesn't mean they're throwing harder necessarily. It means they're hitting their spots better and allowing their infielders to gobble them up. And perhaps they're just pitching better in general. No, That's definitely. Tapped foul. And if you talk with the Tigers pitching staff, whether it be Chris Fetter, Robin Lund, Juan Nieves, they'll all tell you it's all about controlling the strike zone. Throwing strikes, not walking hitters, challenging hitters. Lifted to center. Routine from Arizna. Two away for the top of the order. Julian the designated hitter and two for three so far today. Singled in the first and doubled in the fifth. Swung on and missed. In there for strike two. One and two, don't waste any time. Don't want to be a nibbler. You want to go right after and put him away. Got him. First time the Twins have been retired in order. It comes courtesy of Tyler Holton here in the seventh.
He keeps it 3-2 Detroit. We stretch at Comerica Park. Sponsored by Figer Wall. Sports is brought to you by Rally House Detroit, your city, your house, Rally House. By Comerica Bank, raise your expectations of what a bank can be, come to Comerica. And by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers, put it in D and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. Been an enjoyable Sunday so far. Tigers lead it 3-2 with Kirk Gibson. I'm Matt Shepard. Look, this is getaway day for Detroit. They head to Texas and then Colorado. This Minnesota club has to go to Atlanta. I know it's late June, Gibby, but this is an important game for Detroit, don't you think? It's, it's huge. It's the end of a, a two-week or a ten-game period where they play them seven out of ten. If you can gain two games, we win this game, we'll gain two games out of that. Um, that's exceptional. You want to keep making progress. It makes you feel better. You can say it doesn't matter. It does matter. And you don't want to put all your emphasis on this game. But when you get on that plane, and you've been on quite a few planes now, it's a much different atmosphere. They travel, uh, they get in in a better mood, they come to the park tomorrow. They have less to work on because they have the confidence. Nothing better than taking down the guys that are on top of you. You gotta just one by one go up and get them. So, you know, they played good, they played energetic. Um, they're gonna have tough games, but it's really hard to play 162 game schedule. I don't think people understand how hard it is. They're coming and they're busting it. They may be dragging a little bit, but they're they're giving it 100 percent effort, and that's all you can ask for. And the results are better this year than in the past. No doubt. Detroit six and one in series against AL Central team. Jordan Belazovic is in for a second straight day, and he gets the seventh inning against Andy Abanez, Matt Vierling, and Jake Rogers. You're going to swing it, making sure it's a good pitch, and you hit it hard. One and one now to Abanez. It wasn't a good pitch. The umpire missed it, but good take. That's tapped foul. Minnesota's no doubt encouraged. They closed the book on Bailey Ober. He struck out a season high eight. Gave up the three runs on five hits through six innings. That's upstairs two and two. That pitch right there that they throw high. I think that's a tough pitch certainly to get a piece of. But even the layoff comes right over the top. Swung on and missed. Down goes Ibanez. Loves that changer. Three two. Summer memories are created here at Comerica Park. Get your front row seat to summer with the Tigers four game flex plan. To customize your plan today, go to tigers.com slash flex. Here's Matt Veerling. Singled and scored in the third, struck out in the fourth. He had a good approach over this weekend, not pulling off it. Hitting the V low. He saw over 100 two nights ago and got a knock to right field. Just took his time. Nice short stroke. Got to keep it that way, though. I think the Tigers are getting some answers on Matt Veeling. Is he part of their future? It sure appears like that would be a positive result. Yeah, who knows? You know, how long are you talking? Um, if they're going to continually try and get better. He's played good for the Tigers. I think he's shown he's got pretty good sense for the game. And like I said, you see that approach when you're facing somebody that's throwing 100, you can't get all the way around that ball. You got to go right to it, just like he does. Now three and two to him. Jeez. Up and away, down and in, both strikes. Ooh. And he just took his time out.
in the air right field. Gallo giving chase, but then letting it drop foul. Good approach right there. And we've seen that get much better over 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 the season so far. Just get on base, get some pressure on the twins. Make make them make an error and make it hurt. This is one of the many things that Veerling does well. Makes for the most part now, makes the pitcher work. Well, it's eight, is it 80, 85 degrees out today? You got to throw the ball every 20 seconds with somebody on, and basically 14, 15 seconds with them off. There's a walk. A one-out free pass for Veerling. He's aboard for the second time today. Just keep an eye on Veerling. He's Got to want to run right here. Got to, you've got to really pick something up on this pitcher, though. You can't just run because you want to. Got to have something on him, and you got to go with it. Four stolen bases for Veerling so far this year. We'll keep an eye on him with Rogers standing. Quick to the plate right there. That doesn't bode well for the SB. To right field on a line. Gallo with a diving grab to steal away extra bases from Rogers. Wow, that was a big play. Sure was. A good read by Veerling as well. This ball goes to the corner. He probably scores or he has a chance to. Gallo lays out. He's a guy who's not afraid. He's got speed out there. Bigger, bigger lead. Helps to be 6'5. Part of the reason he's won a couple of gold gloves. Here's Jake Marisnik. Gallo's got a great arm and plays his position very, very well. A couple of strikeouts from Marisnik. You know, he's not stopping in his set. And they used to call that. And he's supposed to stop completely. See if he does it this time. He did this time. Base hit to left for Jake Marisnik. Two men aboard for the top of the order. Nice length in the swing. We were talking about it. Watch him stay on it, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. Stay on it. There you go. Nice long finish through this ball. Doesn't pull off it. Doesn't go in and out of the zone. And you have first and second. Rocco Baldelli's going to go get his reliever. Jordan Belazovic and he'll go back to his bullpen. He wants Brent Hedrick. He wants Hedrick, the lefty, to take on McKinstry with two men aboard and two away. As Minnesota goes to their bullpen, Brent Hedrick, the lefty, comes out in his sixth appearance of the year. It forces A.G. Hinch's hand. He replaces Zach McKinstry with Zach Short. Well, this is one of the luxuries that A.J. Hinch has. He knows that Short, he's been really good against lefties. And he's in a perfect position right here to be ready on that first pitch and get another run in. He takes strike one. Short inherits a couple of runners on. Veerling at second for him and Marisnik at first. Quickly behind 0 and 2. A lot more strikes being called here late in this game. You got to protect now, Shorty. Foul back.
now one and two. High fastballs in the changeup, it looks like. In the dirt. Inside two and two. You're looking ahead for the Tigers. Eight games work. Corbin Carroll, who was just here with the Diamondbacks, hits a sing, goes out in a single to center field. Derek Hill, the center fielder, takes his time and he scores all the way from first base. We need a little of that energy here when the Tigers come back up. 3 2 game through seven innings. Not a ton of action going on, but looking to. Win this game, win this series. Got a new pitcher, wall side windows pitching change. Jose Cisnero throwing the ball better. Started sluggishly this year. See the ERA down there at 215, not walking anybody. If you're AJ Hitch, you're looking to get through six more outs. That's all you got to do. Hold them for six outs. Maybe tack one or two runs on for yourself. And hit that plane happy. A little different defense behind him now with Zach Short into the game at second base, forcing Nibanez to move from second to left field. And then Matt Feeling, who started in left for the second time this year, shifting to right field, taking McKinstry's place there. I think we were talking earlier about moving corner to corner in the outfield. Mm -hmm. The ball does come down differently. You got to. You got to consciously tell yourself when that ball goes up what it's going to do on the way down. Cisnero will face Donovan Solano, Carlos Correa, and Royce Lewis. It's like three balls that have been a booth over in this game. Yeah. I was hoping you were just going to kind of lean over and reach out and haul one in for us. Slowly to third, Maton on the charge. Throws off balance, brings Torkelson up the line and makes a nice grab and tag nice at the same play. time. Maton right here broke back initially and then he finally came up and got it. Ball stayed down, didn't allow him to come up. Good job by Torque deciding to come off the bag, catch the ball, and make a tag. Oh, yeah, he got you. You go. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a dangerous play for a first baseman right there. Yeah, because of the elbows, right? Yeah, when well you just break your hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder. Huh. Sometimes you just got to close your eyes and hope for the best. That may be one of them. We expected a lot of fly ball outs in this game. That's the first ground ball out since Carlos Correa's ground ball double play in the fifth. Wait, was that huge or what? Twins had runners at the corners with only one out, down a run, and Correa bounces into the 6 4 3 double play. The second time he has hit into a double play today. Popped foul. Got him swinging. Nasty stuff from Cisnero to away. Take a look at the Tigers' upcoming matchup presented by Wallside Windows against one of the best teams in baseball. We saw them earlier this year at Comerica Park. They have a dynamite lineup. The Rangers 47 and 29 on the year. They can rake. Their starters have been red hot. And Adolis Garcia is as good as he gets in right field offensively and defensively. They took two of three from Detroit here at Comerica Park earlier this year. The Tigers will play four games there in Arlington starting tomorrow on Valley Sports. Yeah, don't have a soft tummy going in there because you're going to have to fight, dig it out. They'll come back. you got to come back. 
It is a long and deep lineup, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and it's hot down there, and their pitching is better than it has been in the past. So just got to enjoy the challenge, buddy. And that roof closed because of the 103 plus temperatures expected. Matthew Boyd against Andrew Haney tomorrow. How humid is it supposed to be? It gets humid down there as well. Hot and humid. We'll be sweating a lot. Let's put it that way. Cisneros throwing the ball better, we made note of. Generally, the slider controls that. He gets that slider down the way, unhittable. Walked him. Just the second walk allowed by a Tigers pitcher today. Usually doesn't happen for the Tigers bullpen. Their bullpen, percentage wise, has the lowest walks per batters faced in all of baseball as Chase and Shreve begins to warm. Minnesota's going to go to their bench. Max Kepler will be announced as the pinch hitter for Kyle Farmer. So we bring in Shreve. Who do they counter with? Well, the only right handed stick they have really healthy on their bench is Ryan Jeffers. He's a catcher. He is. So he had to use his last catcher. Two days he's doing. Is he going to get him? I think this is where he's going to go and get him. Yeah. Cisneo has faced the minimum of three batters. He has Shreve warming up. Shreve's got that nasty splitter. He's been good lately. Cisnero has two, but he will exit this one after facing the minimum. It's a 3-2 Tigers lead with two away in the eighth for Jason Shreve you when do we come this, back. I do that. Trying to hold a one run lead. They know they've got Foley or Lang for the ninth inning. Lang, however, had 28 pitches. So A.J. Hinch and Rocco Baldelli have been going at it. You do this, I do that, right, Chef? Mm -hmm. And did the A.J. brings in Shreve to face the lefty, and they do counter with their last right handed bat, Jeffers. Ryan Jeffers. Two for three with a double yesterday. Stands in against Chase and Shreve and Wallside Windows pitching change. He needs to get him for the final out here in the eighth. So, so this is a, a Bruce Bochy lesson. I mean, he goes for it. We're, I mean, we're emptying the cupboards right here. We're, we're trying to win this game right here. This is a huge at bat. He loves Shreve against Sheffers. He already knows that going in. And he's counting on one of the back in Foley, I'm sure, or Lang for the night. Both who pitched last night. Two and one to Jeffers. So 28 pitches, you know, not great, but he probably can do it, but probably is a limit on how far you let him go. Ground ball through the hole on the left side. Pays off for the Twins. They've got two men aboard. So sometimes the right strategy doesn't work, but that is the right strategy. And when you look at it, that's what you got to go with. Just a roll over, got a guy in first, so they're in double play depth and finds the hole between shortstop and third base. Ex-Tiger Willie Castro stands in now. That's low 1-0. Been on base twice, he's one for two. Singled in the second, walked in the fourth, and then flew out to center. Here you see the splits. Lefties and righties. 
OPS higher versus lefties. Oh, dear. He went. You get guys who chase Willie Castro. Looks like he's been pretty good improvement this year, but you don't want to just keep bouncing it and you get that high pitch. Changes the eye level. Down the right field line, foul. Ooh. That would have been all kinds of trouble, wouldn't it? Yeah, two runs. The one swing up and away as he try and sneak one in on him. Chopper to third for Maton. Easy hop, and he throws it away. Tying run scores. Castro up to second. And Nick Maton with an error in back-to-back -back games, you just can't make that type of mistake in this situation. Well, Willie Castro runs good. He probably rushed a little bit. That, that infield is hard. He laid back. He comes up on it. He just doesn't get his feet ready. You see, he tries to flip him around there. It's too late, and the ball sails. I don't know they would have had him anyway. You want to try and get around that ball if you can. I think that Castro getting out of the box so quick made him amend that throw and it turned into a wild one. Tie game. Now we got to get this out. Buxton's going to hit for Joey Gallo. Buxton has had all kinds of problems with his back. But he will gut through this pinch hit opportunity. Don't let this inning get away now. Ball one. Buxton 0 for 8 in the series. Half of his at bats have ended in strikeouts. Two and one. Tigers got action. Brandon White. Ground ball in the hole. It's short. Baez will throw out Buxton to end the inning. A batter too late. Minnesota gets a run and under earn run to tie it at three. Adolescent and young adult substance abuse disorder. A serious message on a night filled with laughter with many Red Wings legends. It takes place August 26th at Motor City Casino Hotel. Tickets are available right now at the Jamie Daniels Foundation.org. Jamie Daniels Foundation.org. Bottom of the eighth in a tie ball game, the Tigers will have the two, three, and four hitters. Do up. 
Brock Stewart is new for Minnesota. And he will get Spencer Torkelson, Kerry Carpenter, and Javier Baez. Look at those numbers. ERA 073. He's ready for a butt whooping, isn't he? I <laughs> hope so. Because he's been good so far, and he was dominant the other night on Friday when we did the game. But the Tigers have had a chance to see him, so get a guy on to get some pressure on him. Well, I, I hope it starts with Spencer Torkelson. Stewart, the number's really, really impressive. Now Rocco Baldelli spelling out the defensive changes for the crew. And here they are. Alex Kirloff enters and plays right field. Donovan Solano moves from first to second. And Christian Vasquez to first base with Ryan Jeffers behind the plate. Torkelson has flown out to center field in each of his first three at bats. Now, I've talked earlier about taking pitches. You know, when you get to the end of the game, you're hoping you have an idea of what they may want to try to do to you. Hopefully, that's the case. And we execute, put it to good use that information. Good swing by Torque there. Up and in, it's two and one to him. Fly ball, right center field, and deep. Back it goes. Taylor circles it. They collide and able to hold on. Kirloff. Holding on despite the collision with Taylor in right center field. Looked like that might get up off the wall. That might have been inside the parker right there. No communication. Kirloff goes down and has it in his glove. Look what I got. Ooh, that almost snow cone down the end. A long out to start the Tigers eighth. Here's Kerry Carpenter. Got the wind blown out. Get one up there in the jet stream. Good time to score one right here. Carpenter's RBI single in the third gave the Tigers a 3-2 lead. Minnesota scored one in the top half of the inning to tie to three. Alex Lang is warming after closing out last night's game. Needing 28 pitches to report his 12th save. He's back getting ready again here today. Carver in a good position here, 2 2. Doesn't have to be a strike. Been on base twice. Walked in the sixth. And grounds it foul. We're talking about the wind. We've got this wind tracker. This is my personal drone flying above the stadium right now. Pretty much you see that it's blowing in. It, sometimes that wind comes out and it goes the opposite way. You've got to find the stream. Carpenter looks at strike three, two away. Hmm. So if that wind was blowing the other way, Torx might have went up, but it's not the case. See if Baez has what it takes to hit one out of here. He's 0 for 3 today.
chops it foul. Wave and a miss. 0 and 2. Just six hits for the Tigers today. Four of them came when they produced three runs in the third. Since that time, a single by Maton in the fourth, and a single by Marisnik in the seventh. A couple errors have been the problem today. Put the Tigers in, in a 3 3 tie. But you got to overcome. Pick, pick each other up. Get that bad feeling. That, Long go. Yeah, that error came in the eighth. Nick Maton's throwing error tied it up. And Baez strikes out for the third time today. Detroit goes in order in the eighth. We remain tied at three, headed to the ninth on Valley Sports. Alex Lang in to work the ninth after. A long night last night that required four outs to earn his 12th save. Lang in a wall side windows pitching change taking over here. And this is what he had to go through last night. Four strikeouts, wasn't it? Four outs, four strikeouts. Yep. Jason Foley couldn't get it done. And he's done a great job with 12 saves on the year. And uh, we're hoping that he gives a quick out here. I would think he'd have a pretty short leash. Well side windows pitching change, Alex Lang. 30 innings. 382 opponents OPS 585. That's meek. He gets the eight, nine, and one hitters here in the ninth. Christian Vasquez, Michael Taylor, and Edward Julian. No walks, make them put in play. Let's get in here and let's score the winning run. A first pitch strike with the curveball from Alex Lang 0 1. Alex Lang, when his curveball is good, I mean, you could almost tell him it's coming. It's that good, it's hard to hit. Slowly to second for Zach Short. He'll take his time, and there's one away. That's nice, Vasquez. Not running hard. It's short. He just took his time. That's nice. Now it's Lang against Taylor. And another first pitch strike from Alex Lang. Good sign, pumping those strikes. Clay Taylor, if you're an outfielder, get on the ball quick. You want to give him an opportunity to think about a, taking an additional base. If you're Michael Taylor, you got to come out of the box hard. Hard. Just missed. An extra long stare from Lang. Well, Alex Lang keeps the ball down. He gets a lot of ground balls. And Jake Rogers is getting real good green. Line drive to center. Marisnik got a good jump on that, didn't he? He was on it. Really impressive in center field. Let's take a look. Where he starts and where he gets it. Here he's there. That ball, again, the wind is blowing in. You know it's going to get knocked down. He is already on his way before that ball was even hitting the bat. When you're in center field, especially, you can kind of see where the ball is going to go and where the swing is going to take the ball. Took care of that. Two down. A couple of hits for Julian today. A single in the first, a double in the fifth. 
2 0. For the Tigers in the ninth, Maton, Ibanez, and Veerling do up. That sounds good to me. 3 0. On the corner to keep him there. Didn't look like he was thinking about swinging it off. Double barrel and the twins both in. They get a run. They'll go to the closer. Missed wide and he walked him. Two out walks in these types of games give managers gray hair. Tough one. This is Donovan Solano. Outfielders have deepened up. Solano has a couple of hits, including a two-run homer in the third that gave Minnesota a two-nothing lead. Detroit answered with three in their half of the third, and then Minnesota got one in the top of the eighth. Two-zero pitch. You got to have a quality pitcher. He's going to be going for the downs. Takes the strike. Jake Rogers really pulled that one up. He's got quite a few calls for the Tiger pitchers throughout the year. There goes the runner. Solano taps it foul. There's what he did in the third. Gibby had traveled 420 feet. Well, he's done. That was a, just a hanger saying hit me. Give tip your cap at him for doing what you're supposed to do to those. However, it's our turn to get him now. Low and away, another full count. Alex Lang really working fast. Don't want to give him a breather if he doesn't get this out. Inside another walk. Been in these situations, you're a uh Position player, you know, here you go, one out, two out, and then a walk and a walk. It gets frustrating. You got to really force yourself to be ready and maybe be hit, hit to you. you. You get mad at, you can't get mad at your teammate. He's doing the best he can. You just got to make sure you're ready if that ball comes to you. You got to make a play of your life right now. 19 pitches for Alex Lang, 10 balls, nine strikes as he faces. Carlos Correa. Could have picked somebody else. Correa with a pretty good track record over time. Not today though. Two strikeouts, two double plays. Jake Rogers gets another call down in the zone. Quickly ahead on two. In the dirt. I mean, it looks like the twins are just looking for that breaking ball, isn't it? They're not even flinching. Yeah. Fastball inside. 
It was inside, but too far inside. Yeah, you got to have it on the plate. Line drive left field. Ibanez is there, Woo. and the inning is over. We head to the home half of the ninth. The Tigers and Twins are tied at three on Valley Sports. Right. Let's go a look at what's coming up after the game on Tigers Live. And the challenge now for the Tigers is to overcome a mistake that just tied this game. Well, the Tigers have a chance here to walk off the Minnesota Twins, the leading American League Central Division Twins. But it's going to be, they have to be patient. They have to get good pitches to hit. There's a lot to break down. We've seen some outstanding plays. We saw some really good at bats. Let's just hope that they're able to come through here and walk off the twins. All right, and here's the good news. The Tigers five and three when tied after eight innings so far this season. Hopefully that bodes well for them here in the bottom of the ninth and for us on the postgame show. Chef? Nick Maton a chance to make amends here to lead off the ninth. One for three today and facing Griffin Jacks. Doesn't walk too many. Does strike people out. No runs in the last 14 appearances. He's due. I knew that was coming. That bounces in 1 and 0. Any way to get on, right, Gibby? Anyway. No doubt. Look at that third baseman right on top of him. Slap it there. You got the. First stops right over behind second base. It's a huge hole out there. Now one and one. Can't try and hit the ball out of the ballpark. It usually doesn't work for any of us. In there for strike two. Maytown looking for that magic. Find a way to get on, steal the base, be the game winner. Come on, buddy. Strikes out to start the inning. Well, got to pick yourself up. Make the play. You're all right. Come on, kid. Look at that, just a breaking ball. Pulling off the ball, he doesn't have his timing yet. It's 13 strikeouts for Tigers hitters today. Andy Abanez has struck out twice in his 0 for 3 and takes strike one from Griffin Jacks. Like a Banyas went up there, is going to make him throw some strikes. That's a way two and one. And that ball was eight inches off the plate. Vasquez brought it back and just held his glove right there. Catchers working real hard to get these pitches for their pitchers. That was Jeffers, I'm sorry. Ground ball to short. Correa throws out Abanez for the second out of the inning. It's Jeffers that's catching, but all the catchers working really hard. Ryan Jeffers coming in. Five years ago, hardly anybody did. You know, it's crazy. It was Matt Veerling. Singled and scored in the third, struck out in the fourth, and walked in the seventh. Seven homers on the year for Matt Veerling. Two of them against Minnesota. One and one. Veerling swung the bat pretty good. He handles velocity very well. He's not pulling off the ball. He could get a double here or a homer. That's the sweeper. Foul tipped it into Jeffers' glove. One and two.
Brendan White continues to throw. If needed, he'll be the guy in the 10th. Good take, two and two. You get on, do you go? Yes. Got to find a way. If he goes four or five pitches, you should be able to find a way to get going. Three Ooh. and two. Where are you going? Jeffers tried to bring it back. Jax, he was walking to the dugout. Pretty close. Fouled away. Jake Rogers is on deck. Already a big hit back in the third. Veerling trying to prolong the inning. And he will, thanks to his second walk of the day. A little patience gets you a walk. I don't think Jake Rogers will get a good easy strike to hit his first pitch. They know he likes to swing early. Deep breath for Rogers as he digs in. Doubled and scored in the third. He struck out in the fifth and hit a line drive to right in the seventh where Joey Gallo, the right fielder, had to lay out and make the catch. Quick meeting from their pitching coach, Pete Mackey, with Griffin Jacks and Ryan Jeffers. Well, if you're, what I'm looking at right here, Matt Veerling is on first. So you, you're going to try and score. You want to go from there. You want to go from there. You want to go from there. Do you want to stretch it in your, your route? Do you want to go way out there? Do you want to cut it short? Do you want to think about these things? Now's the time to think about it. Don't leave it at first base. So you, you know, there's two outs. You're going to want to try and score from first. And he gets a double down to the corner. So really watch. How far you get up, they are holding him, of course, but on the secondary lead, you want to really get as much as you can. Rogers looks at ball one. Pretty quick to the plate. Probably not ideal, but they know what moves first already. So I'm going to watch this back leg right there. Yep. Ground ball to short for Correa. The easy out at second, and we're headed to extra innings. Tigers up 3-2. Had a chance to get out of it, and Nick Maytop threw it away. Yeah, right here, this looked like uh, had a little bit of spin on it, and he didn't get his feet and his body around so he could come through it. Castro, Willie Castro got out of the the box really quickly and force the errant throw that tied it up Tigers now we go to extra innings and Maton's still out there he's got to be ready you got to put those things be behind you you get frustrated you don't try and do that but if you let it affect you from this point on in the game that's when they really hurt both teams are seven and three in extra inning games. The seven wins, as you saw there, tied for the league lead. Wall side windows pitching change. Brendan White makes his second appearance in the series. He faces Royce Lewis and inherits a runner at second base. Carlos Correa made the final out in the ninth, so he starts at second base in the tenth. And Lewis takes strike one. A slider makes it 0-1. Oh, he's got to get that ball down there. Good day for Royce Lewis. He scored that tying run in the eighth inning on the air by Maton. He's been on base three times, single twice, and is two for three. If you're in the infield, you want to knock it down if you can. Brendan White will get Royce Lewis then 
Ryan Jeffers and Willie Castro here in the 10th. A lot of balls topped in this game. What does that tell you? I just think when you overswing, you know, especially getting games like this, trying to end it with one swing, tend to pull off. Ground ball left side. Maton under his glove and into left field. They're going to send home Correa. Got Here's it. the throw from left and dropped by Rogers. My goodness. He's totally pressured the Tigers right there. Banyas did a heck of a play right here. Ball gets under the glove. So you got a little bit. Look at Banyas. He's on it. He's got him. Just uh, probably fighting it a little bit. That's and here you see uh, as, you're, as you're a catcher. It's hard. You, you, you're trying to get that ball to the to the plate as quick as you can. That's tough. You got to really force yourself to say ball, ball, ball. Focus on that ball. It's like being a receiver. No peekaboo. Jeffers bunts one. Torkelson thought about going to third, then forced to go to first for the first out. But Jeffers does his job, moving Lewis to third. In field to be coming in. Take a look at Correa right here. And he didn't think he was going to score. Then he got the go, go, go. Way around him. I don't know if he would have had him or not. Infield is in against Willie Castro. Bunts it foul. Safety squeeze for the Twins there. Great play. You can execute it. It's a way attacking on. You don't have to go if you're third. You don't. You do have to go at, at first. You get first and third. If you see that Tigers come in a little bit. Takes it low two and one. Missed outside three and one. We mentioned the infield in Baez, the only Tigers infielder with his feet on the grass. Both feet right up the middle. Behind Brendan White on the infield grass. That's in there for a strike. It's a full count to Willie Castro. No, it's disappointing, but you got to really cut that recent. Bobbles, you got to take that out of your minds. You got to make a play. Got to get out of this. Only give it up one run. That's not a big deal. Could use a strike out here. Instead, off the glove of short into right center field. Willie Castro comes back to hurt the Tigers again. It's an RBI single for him. Now 5 3 Minnesota. Same thing. They got to try and get out of this. Willie Castro feeling very comfortable here against the Tigers. Another two hit performance for Castro. And a stolen base to boot. 14 steals for Castro, a career high for him. They might challenge this. Detroit's challenging the safe call at second base. Well, 
Oh, it looks like you got him, huh? Sure hope so. Don't know that it's going to turn it around, but at this point you have to try and use your challenges. I think he got him. It's not really clear when he was touching the bag. Yeah, he's got that oven mitt, Gibby. It gives him a little bit of extra. Yeah, I'm, I'm against those things. I know you are. I think it's, I mean, it gives an added edge. We're like four inches long. You agree or disagree with me? Uh, I, I definitely agree with you. I, I do understand why they wear them. Um, you know, trying to protect their hands, but, but you're always supposed to make a fist if you're going to go in head first. That way, your hand does get stepped on and limit the damage. That's a big advantage. Minnesota has a franchise record 25 consecutive successful stolen bases on the line here with that Willie Castro attempt. And he did a good sneak attack there because. When you get run scored on you, then all of a sudden you you just forget a little bit, and he just took right off. It's a huge jump, a little different angle here. After review, the call stands. The runner is safe. Detroit will lose their challenge. Now, 26 consecutive successful stolen base attempts for Minnesota. This is Alex Kirloff, his first at bat of the day. Came in as a defensive replacement. Minnesota's bench is empty now with Kirloff getting the at bat. Got to throw it over here. Two one in the air to left. Ibanez is there for the second out. Ibanez played a good game out there in left field. It's adjusted he's nicely, hasn't he's he? He's all over. Really good jumps. Time you look at him, he's already going to jump on the second step. Brings up Christian Vasquez. Fouls it away. Shoots it through the hole on the right side. Castro will try and score. Here's the throw from Veerling. Not in time. Castro's in with the head first slide, and Vasquez is thrown out at second base. Run scores three runs in the 10th for Minnesota. The Tigers will have the nine one and two hitters to try and punch back. Come on. They need to rally. They do. Uh, coming into a tie game, Twins scored one in the eighth, three in the 10th. So we can score too. We get to start with the guy on second base, just as they did. Tigers, a little sloppy down the end of this game. It makes it hurt a little bit, but still got an opportunity to get another guy on base, get that tying run to the plate. Eric Haas is going to pinch hit for Jake Marisnik here to lead off the 10th with Jake Rogers at second base, and they'll have to face Johan Duran, one of the hardest throwing pitchers in all of baseball. And it's been pretty darn good in save situations so far this season. 10 for 12, as you see there. We have a loss yet. It'd be nice if we could do that for him. 
Yeah, rarely kept. Rogers made the final out in the ninth. He starts the tenth at second base. And Eric Haas stands in two for three with an RBI yesterday. Strength against strength. 101 from Duran. Haas, a fastball hitter. It's 1-0. Yeah, what's the dilemma? Do you take a strike or do you go ahead and swing away? This is pretty hot. Fouled away. Haas hole for one in his career against Duran. Fastball, got a good slider. Out of the zone, chased it, it's one and two. Pretty hard to get to that right there. Over 100 at the top. But you stand in there, it looks like it's coming right in there. It's too late. Inside through the curveball at him. It's two and two. So he was on it. Good to see shorten up a little bit. Many times, you see a guy that throws this hard, it makes you swing harder. And it actually slows your swing down. Got to find a way to convince yourself. Just go right to the ball. Just Atta got boy. a piece of it. That a boy, yep. Mm -hmm. Really hard to pull these balls, let alone hit it. Chopper up the middle. They'll have to hurry. Correa. Got it. Got it. No. I don't know. That's going to be close. That's going to be close there. Remember, the Tigers don't have any challenges. Don't they have to make sure it's right? Appears to be the right call anyway. It does. He did that little jump. You want to try and go right through the front of that bag. Here's Zach Short. Pinch that hit close. in the seventh and struck out. Fouls it away. Here's the whole play. Hossie trying to get out of that box. Got it. That little leap right there. Gave it everything you had. Short fouls another one away. Under two and a half miles an hour. Just one career at bat against Duran, and he struck out. Over through that one, one and two. That's a good take there. It seems like the Sky should be perfect. No shadows. Big end deck. It's torque on deck. I know that. 
Got my glasses off, I guess it shows. Struck him out. Laid off the one slider, came back with it. It's a breaking ball. He had a couple of high fastballs and he came back with it. Ball breaking right down into the ground. Didn't pick up the spin until it was too late. Leaves it up to Spencer Torkelson. 0 for 4. 4 fly ball outs. Swung on and missed. Torkelson has flown out to center field three times. His fly out to right center was deep and forced a collision between Taylor and Kirloff. Kirloff was able to hold on to it for the out. Just missed it. Yep. Looked like it was going to carry out, but it got back there in right center and just kind of wind got it and knocked it down. Eight home runs on the year for Torkelson. A chopper up the middle on the backhand. Ah! Solano throws him out and Minnesota mm. comes back to win the game and the series. This one's going to sting a while. Tigers had him 3-2 in the eighth and then fall victim. Some bad defense and they fall 6-3. Let's send it to Mickey York standing by at the Figer Law desk for Tigers Live post game. All right, Shep, thank you very much. It was a game that meant something to both teams, and they fought like it. There were a couple of key plays, as you mentioned, that helped and both hurt the Tigers. Today, we'll take a closer look at those and the impact they had before the Tigers head to Texas to kick themselves for an opportunity loss. Reaction and a disappointing clubhouse next on Tigers Live.